All right. How's it going, everybody? This is um, the dude to your back with more stuff, more um, DAW stuff, uh, <laughs> more music production. Sorry, like, I'm trying to release videos every two days, I hope. Um, we'll see. I'm... The reason I haven't been doing it right now is because, like I said, I'm moving. I'm very close. Uh, what do we got here? We're August 1. So I will be going on the 4. So I'll be flying. So I'll probably put this video out today. Um, or maybe 2, August 2nd. And then I'll put another one up. So I'll get it on Thursday. I'll arrive in Finland on the Friday because it's like five, 15 hours of flying. So I'll get there and I might, I probably make a video right away uh, when I get there, but maybe it'll be more like a vlog style thing. Um, we will see about that. Yeah. So, um, Maybe I'll show you where, like, the room I'm in and stuff. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to do. That's why I've also been procrastinating a video. Uh, maybe today we will talk about... Let's find a plugin that we could just go at. You know, let's, let's do polysynth, maybe. Okay. So we're going to go after Polysynth today, and we're going to look at all of its fantasticness. So let's make some chords, maybe. I apologize for any lag. Um, Bitwig is not optimal for recording, even though it's my main DAW. Yeah, I know, it kind of sucks. So if I do anything in here, I'll be, like, really um, weird. I'm just gonna make chords in it so you can hear the sound.
not that bad of a, a chord stack with polysynth. So you can make super solid polysynth, which is what I like about it. Um, let's see here. I'm using hotkeys in forever. So this is polysynth uh, originally. It is a saw to get rid of that silly um, acid sound. I like to put the high pass on and put the frequency all the way down. And then it's, then it's this, right? And then you can change the pitch, right? Like that with, um, not sure what this is called, but it's a, it's, it does stuff. And then there's actually a pitch knob here for like, uh, semitones. Then there's a shape so you can get like, um, so this is also sor sort of like a pitch thing. It basically goes from like, uh, thin saws to like square. So realistically, those are your only choice of waves. Then you have sync, which thought was pretty cool. Then you can sub, which just turns into a square, which is cool. And you have a unison option, so you can get up to 16 voices. So with proper processing, you could actually make like a some sort of cool synth with this. And maybe some layering. There's some glide on here. And then you have legato or staccato. So you can... So that way... Um, so if you have it with re with the legato, when you play the next note, it won't re-trigger re the uh, envelope if you have one like... See, like if I play like this, put this on, it doesn't do it anymore. So, as if you play multiple notes, like back and forth, velocity sensitivity, which is essentially just volume, and then you have three LFOs and output panning, and uh, that's pretty much it. You have like a main pitch. Main gain, a noise, and then you've got um, a mix between the the two oscillators, and then you have an amp modulation for both oscillators, and then a filter for both oscillators uh, above it, which is really cool. And then you have uh, offsets for the waves here, and then you have retriggers for. Starts of some really awesome neural bases. A little way too much bass in there, but if you want to make like derpy synths, then that's cool too. Like, uh, let me get an example here. stuff and then like using the rest of it wigs things you can get really in debt with what you do like compress and stuff uh, you can combine it with cool things like the filter mixed with let's see here where is it at it's a yeah step mod and then you can have it re-trigger and you can make plucks like this basically. So you just do that, make one step. Pick a speed and hertz or whatever. Cause this filter, there's something weird about this filter that I don't like. So this is what I would do in any situation like this. Let's just turn it off. And then do something here. 
because I can put this in an FX slot and then go and click mod on this. And then or you know what? Maybe LFO would be better suited for this. Step mod has cool purposes, don't get me wrong. But like if you have LFO mod and you have retrigger, you could do uh, hertz. And if it's on retrigger, it'll always start at the maximum. Then you can just set it to one of these pluck shapes here, like a super saw shape, saw shape. do this yeah you might be better off with like beats because you can get depth with this one You can see the LFO restart. So this is how you would like, I guess, basically do the equivalent of having a serum and then making an LFO that restarts on like a thing here like this. Except this one would keep going like this. But you'd if you stop the note before it ends, and that problem is solved. Other than that, though, the LFO. There's no, like, envelope I, uh, tool. Like, if you came into um, utility or something. Or modulator here. There's no anything for that. Which is cool, um, obviously. But you'd want to put this before, like, the reverb or anything, because that'd get weird with the reverb. I think, yeah. There you go. I <laughs> don't know what else to say about polysynth really okay so like i have chords here for example right let's get into this my chords basically use the glide in in this instance, I use a glide here i kind of have these chords here just for fun uh they come in every preset here um there's also like uh key and velocity and like all sorts of things like timbre and stuff uh, options you have to modulate everything by, which is cool. Um, but yeah, in here I just use, put some unison on. It's a saw, and then uh, sixteen voices, and it's just the first oscillator here. And then you can see like the filters off, and then that's really yeah. I think it took velocity sensitivity off. Exact same thing here, except the unison's really low and the bass. What I did was I had the saw wave just come through at a lower octave and then put in some noise and then I added Saturn afterwards to just distort the whole thing with a clean tube. And then I have an accent with built on top of everything. It doesn't sound like quite the way I wanted to. Maybe if I added Saturn. that uh sound i like it to have the screechiness but um and here i just have like a high pitch like shape and then some sync and no filter no amp stuff filled and then this is off and again i have the glide in here put mono on to stop it from being coming forward and yeah polysynth is a very good tool um, I think I was using it a lot, like, in the background. The oscillators on it are kind of weak versus something like Serum. 
but like getting into music i think bitwig actually has like a ridiculous amount of like fundamental stuff that comes with it which is really cool like um the eq5 the polysynth and then it's got like reverb like the reverbs and delays bitwigs are just the nicest things i've ever seen and the filter like it's just and the compressor and the 8-bit like they're just so so sweet um yes yeah, so that's like why i that's why i like that's why i'm using this instead of like logic you know i have both of them which is kind of like into logic right now uh i wasn't sorry i'm not into logic i'm kind of into logic more into bitwig still but um, yeah, this is like, Bitwig's a great starter pack for like not knowing what you're doing in music, especially because like, if you can learn what to do with polysynth here and like process it when you actually start to get a real VSTs and stuff, like you're just, you'll end up like killing it. Um, which is really sweet. So, uh, yeah, that's all I had to say about polysynth really. I probably am. I'm so tired. Uh, very stressed out to move to uh to finland there by myself all by myself leaving behind all the family so um yeah when that happens though i should be able to get over there and get psyched for music again i haven't been making like any music so it might forgive me for my poor production quality right now uh everything i'm putting out is probably pretty pretty crap so it's I apologize, but like, there's nothing I can really do about it. It's either this or just not po post anything. So, at least people who watch this all the way through will know, um, why or or what. But there will be uh, better things coming in store, hopefully, and hopefully, like, my channel won't have to end or anything. But like, it would also help if people gave out suggestions, because I'm not one for just making random videos on nothing. Because I'm well, I'm just trying to share my knowledge, so I don't know what people want to know, and it's hard to ask yourself like the question of what did I want to know when I was starting, or like what because there's still things like I don't know obviously, but I don't remember or even realize what was important out of the things that I wanted to know when I was first starting, um. And if it's things like how to make a dubstep bass, then just ask, and I can I can show. Uh, silly things like that. I just don't uh, clickbait and stuff. So, yep. Thanks for watching. Uh, this should make it up tomorrow. Uh, see ya.